Hi, welcome back. This is Rakesh Naik. Today we are going to discuss about circular queue. We'll see how to implement circular queue using linked list. But before we start, a small information I'd like to say. In this channel, we produce every video in two different languages, Hindi as well as in English. If you want to watch this video in Hindi, kindly follow the link given in the description. And if you have not yet subscribed, please press the subscribe button followed by the bell icon so that you will get regular updates from this channel. So let us start. Till now we have seen what is a queue, how to implement a queue using array and linked list. And apart from that we have seen what is a circular queue and how to represent it using an array. By now you know what is a queue and what is a linked list. I feel I need not give any example of a queue in our day to day life. But in computer science, let us think about the printer. When two of your friends give a print command, then the printer spoolers take the commands in a queue and whichever command is there in the front, it takes it and prints it first. Similarly, operating system uses a queue when it schedules the process. So let us see the definition. The basic definition of a queue that it is a restricted list where all the insertion are done at one end called a rear and at the other end all the deletion are done that is called a front. This is the definition of a linear queue. But then there are some limitations of this linear queue. A suitable code need to be written in order to make the front regularly catch up with the rear and reset the board. Array implementation of linear queue leads to a queue full condition even though the queue is not actually full. Let us see this animation, you will be able to understand it. Let us say this is a linear queue, front and rear are pointing to minus 1. It means the queue is right now empty. Let us enter some data into it. So for entering what we generally do, we increment the rear, add the element at the rear, then increment the rear and add the element. So we continue entering the element till the queue is full. Let us add few more. So at the third location, element 4 is inserted. At fourth location, element 5 is inserted. At fifth location, element 6 is inserted. Now the queue is full. Now assume that we are deleting few elements from here. So in order to delete, we need to increment the front and the front will be deleted. Next again, if you want to delete, again we will be incrementing the front and we will be deleting. Right now you see a situation where rear is pointing to the last element, but at the front there are some vacant places. So even though there are some vacant places in this queue, we cannot enter any more data into it because the rear is pointing to the last index. So in order to enter more data into it, what we need to do? We need to shift all the elements and readjust front and rear. So like that, 3 is shifted, 4 is shifted, then 5 is shifted, 6 is shifted. The rear and front pointer need also to be shifted. So right now, a vacant places is created at the rear and we can enter any more data. So this is one limitation of a linear queue. In order to overcome it, we need a circular queue. So what are the advantages of the circular queue? Let us see. So in circular queue, we need not shift the data. We can avoid readjustment of rear and front pointer by using a mod function. This mod function will wrap up the queue back to the beginning. Apart from that, if the number of elements to be stored in a queue is fixed, then circular queue is much more advantageous. And we use circular queue in many applications like printer queue, like priority queue, simulations. Let us see what are the operations that we can perform with a circular queue. So the operation that we perform with a linear queue is same as the operation that we perform with a circular queue, like add an element. So we can add an element 
let us say the element is i we will insert this element into the circular queue at the rear similarly deletion of an element deletion of an element from circular queue will do it from the front get front get front means getting the data which is available in the front we will not delete it we will just get a copy of it and to implement these operations we need to have operation called is empty so whenever we will be deleting a queue every time we will be checking whether the queue is empty or not if the queue is empty then we are not allowed to delete any more data and one more operation is is full it will return true if the queue is full the queue can be implemented by using either array or by using a linked list in this video we are going to represent a circular queue using linked list only let us see the class definition of a circular queue we'll take a class called node in which there will be two parts one is a data part and one another is a link part we'll take one more class cql list it means circular queue linked list we'll take two pointer called front and rear which is of type node we are taking a constructor where at the beginning front is pointing to null and rear is pointing to null apart from that three operations we are defining so whenever a node we are defining it will be containing two parts one part will contain data another part will contain the address of the next node let us see how basically we operate with a circular queue let us see these are the data available in a circular queue front is pointing to 0th location and rear is pointing to the last location that is 7th location so whenever we will be deleting the front we need to readjust to the first location of the queue the front is pointing again we can delete it and again we have to readjust the front similarly when we want to enter a data we will be readjusting the rear and enter at the next item of the rear that is at 0th location we can enter our data 9 now let us see how can we make insertion in a linked circular queue we are taking a node which is having two part the first part contain data and the second part will be pointing to itself so whenever a memory location is allotted we will be having a data part which is a new node and the address part link which is pointing to itself so when we let us say we cover this statement let us assume the data a is read here at the memory location 1024 at the constructor level we have seen the rear is null so if rear is equal to null what we are going to do front we are pointing to the new node and rear we are pointing to front that is new node like that front and rear are two pointers that will be pointing to that memory location where new node is pointing let us say if we want to enter one more node for it let us say by reading this we got the node which is allotted at 1032 memory location and which contain data b and this is a new node so as rear is not null rear is right now pointing to the memory location 1024 so it will come to the else part in the else part rear's link is new node so after the execution rear is pointing to the first node so after the execution rear's link will be pointing to this particular memory location that is 1032 so 1032 address came here the next one is new node's link is front so new node's link was pointing to itself so after the execution new node's link will be pointing to the front that is memory location 1024 and we'll shift our rear to the next that is it will be pointing to the new node or that it is pointing to the node containing data b let us add one more node to it so after reading this data let us assume that this is node containing data c is read at memory location 1040 as the rear is not null we'll come to the else part in the else part rear's link is new node so after the execution it will contain memory address 1040 next statement is new node's link is front so new node's link will be pointing to front now it contain 1024 and rear equal to rear link now rear is pointing to the node containing data c so this is how we are going to add node in a circular linked list as the property of linked list say that whenever we need a dynamic queue it means there is no fixed size at that time 
we can use a linked list. So that's why we are not using a queueful condition here. We can use a queueful condition by taking how many nodes the queue can contain. One more condition we can add and do it. Now let us see what are the steps we did. We are passing the new node and if rear equal to null, we are assigning front equal to new node and rear equal to front. And otherwise, rear's link is new node, new node's link is front and rear equal to rear's link. This is what we have done and before that, we read this data. We have assigned memory location, we read the data and we make the link to itself and we are returning this new node. I hope you understood how to insert a node in a circular queue when the queue is implemented using linked list. So let us see how to delete a node from a circular queue. So let us assume that this is a circular queue available to me and let us follow these steps. So I'll take one more pointer called current which is supposed to point where front is pointing. So front is pointing to the node containing data A. So to that particular node current is also pointing. If rear's link is not equal to rear, if this condition is true, then we'll do this set of work. So this is true. So front link is equal to front. So front will take to the next node, that node containing data B. And the next statement is rear link equal to front. So rear link is now pointing to the node pointed by current. But instead of that, it's supposed to point to the node pointed by the pointer front. After the execution, rear's link will be pointing where front is pointing and we'll delete current. We can delete current like this. Let us delete one more node from a circular queue. So after the execution, we'll taking a pointer current, which is pointing to the node where front is pointing. So here rear's link is not equal to, this is true. So what we have to do? Front link is equal to front. So front will take to the node containing data C. After the execution, front will be here. And rear's link equal to front. Rear link now is pointed to the node containing data B. But after the execution, it will be pointing to the node containing data C. Again, it will come out and delete the current. So current is deleted. Let us delete one more node from here. So current equal to front. Now current is pointer which is pointing to the node containing data C. If rear link not equal to, so what we'll do, we'll take front to the next node. So after the execution, front will be pointing here and rear's link equal to front. So rear's link will be pointing to this particular node. And after that, we can delete the current. It is now deleted. Now this circular queue contain only one node. Again, we'll take current equal to front. And if rear's link is not equal to front, so we'll come to the else part. What we'll do? Front equal to null. We'll be having null. Front will be pointing to this particular pointer and rear will be pointing to null. So rear also will be pointing to null and we'll be deleting the current. So current will be deleted like this. So let us see the program segment. The same thing we are doing. If front is not null, what we are doing? If this condition is true, then front link equal to front and rear link equal to front. That's what we are doing. Otherwise, front equal to null and rear equal to null. We'll delete the current. And if this condition is not satisfying, we'll say we cannot delete any more data. I hope you understood how to delete a node from a circular queue, which is represented by a linked list. Now, one more function is there, get front. So what we'll do? If front is not null, we'll return the front's data. So only front's data only will be returning. We are not going to delete the node. Only the value which is available in this particular node will be returned. I hope you understood how to represent a circular queue using linked list. And if you think linked representation of circular queue is also important, then give a thumbs up and share among your friends. In our next video, we are going to see priority. So see you then. Till then take care. Bye.